Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Jim and this video is about source control. Now specifically I will be dealing with source control in Unreal Engine. However, this could be applied to really any project, not even game development. It could be any project in general if you wanted to use source control. A common question I see is I want to collaborate on a game with my friends and how can we do that? How can we all work together on the same project? Now, there are many ways you could do this, but I would argue the best way is by using some means of source control. So what is source control? Source control provides a lot of functions to a project. However, these are just some of them that I wanted to highlight. The biggest one and why it's called source control is that it tracks all changes to your project and it allows that project to be reverted back to any previous state. So it's almost like a time machine, or to use a gaming analogy, it's like a checkpoint. It allows control over what changes are committed to the main project file, so you can have a stable build of your project and then control what changes are made to that portion of the project. And it does this using something called branches or a branching hierarchy. And the last two points are really highlight what the point of this video is. It allows multiple users to collaborate on the same project by using a remote repository. And it allows multiple users to work on a project at the same time. This is really the reason why a lot of people use source control, but I would argue that having control over the project files is arguably the most important part of it. And as a caveat, this video will not go greatly in depth into source control. For the sake of keeping the video short, I just wanted to stick to how to get it set up on your project. If you're interested in knowing more about source control, I highly recommend Stephen Ulibarri's course on Udemy, the ultimate Get course with applications in Unreal Engine. This will teach you pretty much everything you need to know about source control. And Steven is arguably one of the best teachers in game dev on Udemy. So I highly recommend this if you wanna take a deeper dive. For the sake of keeping this video short though, I just made a quick diagram that shows the basics of what it is. So let's start by discussing the remote repository. The remote repository can exist in a variety of places and technically it could even exist locally on your machine and you can allow other people to access it. But in most cases, you're gonna be using some means of backing up the data to a remote location. And that is the purpose of the remote repository. In every repository, there is always a main branch. From the main branch, people can make other branches and you can have a variety of branches. You can have one branch for each person. You could have one branch for each gameplay functionality that you're programming. You could have multiple branches for multiple things. You could have branches of branches that then could be merged into the branch that then is merged into the main. So you really can choose the hierarchy that works best for your project. But the point is, all of those branches ultimately will report back to the main branch. And then on the right side, you have local repositories. Now, one thing I just wanna make clear is that your local repository becomes a copy of the remote repository. So whatever exists on the remote repository, you're gonna be downloading to your local machine. And this is an interesting distinction to make because I think some people get confused and they don't understand that when you make a change locally and you save it locally, you will then also need to send that change to the remote repository so that other people could see it. So let's get started with getting a project set up on GitHub. Now, like I said before, there are many different companies out there that provide source control services. I personally like to use GitHub, but there are a lot of different ones that offer the same functionality. Another big one is Perforce but that one's a little bit more of a deeper dive. I may do another video series on how to set up Perforce in Unreal Engine, but that may take more than a couple of videos to break down all the different parts. For this one, I thought GitHub is a good place to start. It's relatively easy to get set up on a project and you can start collaborating right away. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to github.com and you'll see I'm here. We're going to click the sign in or sign up button depending on whether you have an account or not after you've made a github account the next thing we're going to do is we're going to download the github desktop client 
it can be found at desktop.github.com. You'll want to download that and install it on your PC. The first thing I want to go over is how to connect to an existing GitHub repository. So this is a repository that already exists on GitHub and you want to connect to that remote repository. From the GitHub desktop, we're going to here where it says current repository, select this arrow, select add, and then clone repository. Now, if it's a repository that's yours, then it will actually appear in this list. Or if it's a repository of someone that you're following, you can see here that I follow the Epic Games account. So we can see some of their repositories as well. If it doesn't show up in this list, you can select URL. And then from GitHub, you can select this code dropdown and you can copy this URL, paste it in here. And just make sure that you select the path that you want the repository to be sent to, to create a copy of. And when you're ready, we'll hit clone. So this repository is empty, but if it wasn't, you would be able to download all of the files from that repository and have access to them on your PC. So let's say you're starting from scratch and you want to create a new project on GitHub. When you are on your GitHub account, you'll select the repositories tab and then select new. It will ask you to name your repository. So for this one, we'll put GitHub tutorial. You could provide a brief description if you want select whether this should be a public or private repository. You can add a readme file if you want to put some information about the repository for others to read. An important step here for Unreal Engine is to add a git ignore file and we will type Unreal and we'll see the Unreal Engine. This is just an example of the Unreal Engine git ignore file. Essentially what a git ignore file is, is it tells git or github in this case, what files you do not want to be part of the repository. Whenever you are creating a project in Unreal Engine, there's a lot of files that don't need to be shared to others because when you first compile the project, they're remade locally. So you don't need a copy of everyone else's local files. You could just send the important stuff over. And this will also help keep your repository small. Unreal Engine's projects can get rather large, especially if you're using a variety of marketplace assets or you know large assets. So doing this will allow you to keep it a little bit smaller so you're not having extremely large repositories on GitHub. We can choose a license if we would like as well. Now, we don't really need this. Uh, you can read about what these licenses are by clicking the learn more. I usually just select the MIT license. It seems to be a pretty common one. And when you're all set, you can collect create repository. And here's the view of our repository from GitHub. We can see here that we have our git ignore file and our license file, and that's all that's there for now. Now, arguably the most common application is you already have a project you've been working on and you realize I would like some help or I would I want to collaborate with someone on this. So in most cases, you already are going to have an existing project that you want to put into GitHub. So how do we do that? To demonstrate this, I've created a project based on one of the templates in Unreal Engine. We can see it here and it's called My Project 2. Very original. And also I've cloned the GitHub tutorial repository that we just made on GitHub to my machine. And we can see that this GitHub tutorial is currently empty with just the couple files that we made. Now there may be a better way to do this, but I found the simplest way is to grab all the contents of your my project file, copy them and just paste them into the repository folder. When we go back to GitHub, we'll now see that all of these files have been added over here as changes. And this is a good time to talk about committing changes. So a commit creates a change to your local branch. Another way of saying it is a commit is one of those checkpoints. This is a point in time where I want to remember all of the changes that were made up to this point. It's fairly easy in the GitHub desktop all we're going to do is put a summary down here and 
we're going to say something that describes the changes we made. So added Unreal Engine Project Files. You can add an additional description. So if one sentence can't summarize it, you can put a list of things or a paragraph. You don't want to write a novel, but make sure there's a decent description of what was changed. And then we'll select Commit to Main. This may take a while when you're first uploading a project file because there's a lot of information to push all at once. Usually it won't take very long if it's just a few small changes though. After the commit is complete, we'll see down here in the bottom left that we have a message committed just now and it'll give the commit message. You can also select undo at this point to undo that commit. So now we have a record of that change on our local machine. What we want to do next is send them to the remote repository. And this is done by something called a push. And again, the GitHub desktop makes this very easy. We can just select push origin. And we'll see all those files are being uploaded to the remote repository now. Now, just like pushing or sending information to the remote repository, we can also receive it or fetch it. To do this, we'll select the fetch origin at the top of GitHub desktop. And you'll see here that we are actually pulling down some of the changes. And we got a message that says pull one commit from the origin remote. And it says that our current main branch has a commit that does not exist on our local machine. So what I did here is I went to another PC and I made a change to our project and I committed that and pushed it to the remote repository. And now on this PC, I can see that change and I can pull it down. So I'll select pull origin. And in GitHub desktop, you can always see the history of all the changes by going to this history tab. And we can see here that there was a commit that says, I made some things purple. Now, I purposely made this vague to show an example of a poor commit message that doesn't really give people information about what was changed. It just says, I made some things purple. And we can go in here and we can look at what changes there actually were, but it would be much better if there was some more specifics in this commit message. Regardless, we can still see these changes here. And here's my project before. And here's my project after with that change that was made on the other PC. And we could see that I created a new material that's purple and I colored a few things in the level purple. It's very important that you fetch those changes at the beginning of every work session so that you're not also changing something that someone else changed in a previous commit. You will get what is called a merge conflict and we'll discuss that in a bit. But a merge conflict is basically the repository saying, I have two copies of the same thing. Which one do you want me to keep? And in that case, you have to select one or the other. So someone may end up losing a lot of their work. And one way to at least mitigate this is by using branches. What a branch does is it takes one of those commits and it creates a new timeline based upon that commit. You can then make changes to a branch without affecting the main branch and then merge those changes back into the main branch at a later time. So to create a branch, we'll select where it says current branch here and we'll select new branch. You can name your branch whatever you want. Usually you'll want to name it based upon a feature that you're working on or in smaller projects, you could even maybe just name it by your personal name. So I'll call this Jim's branch. Now I have the branch locally on my machine. If I want everyone else to see my branch, I'll select publish branch. And now here I'll see I am in the current branch, Jim's branch, which means any changes I make are only going to be made to that branch and they won't affect any other branches, including the main branch. Again, this is a key part when you first start your work for the day to make sure that whatever you're making those changes, you have the correct branch selected so that you're not making changes in the branch that you don't want to. 
So I'm in my branch now and I decide that this purple is just way too bright and way too shiny. So I'm going to make a change and I will adjust the roughness to 0.8. And that purple I think should be a little bit more blue and have a little bit less saturation. Tone it down a bit. And I think that looks much better for this level. So I'm ready to make a commit. We can see here in GitHub that there's one change file and that is my material that I made. So I'll create a commit message and I will say updated purple material to be less shiny. I'll do this commit and push it. Now everyone else can see my change, but that change only exists on my branch. If I want that change to be on the main branch, I'll need to do a pull request or a merge. GitHub Desktop gives you this handy little shortcut here, which will navigate you directly to it. However, if I wanted to do it manually from GitHub Desktop, all I need to do is select pull request and I, I can select new pull requests, but here it's giving me a little warning again that says Jim's branch has a change. So I'll just select that to get to the same place. And in my pull request here, we have a very important thing to note, and that is it's giving us some information about where we are doing the merge. So it's saying I'm merging from Jim's branch into main. And you can change these based upon what you desire we can also see that the commit message is here. We can leave an additional comment if we like, but if everything looks good, we'll create the pull request. It'll give us some information that says there's no conflicts and we will confirm the merge. Now, all the changes from Jim's branch are in the main branch. But one more thing to note is that those changes were made on the remote repository, but my local repository doesn't have that change yet. So we want to make sure that we fetch again. We can go to the history and select compare to branch and main, and we see that we are in Jim's branch. We're comparing to main branch, and it's giving us an indication that we are one change behind so we can select create a merge commit and then push. And now we see behind zero and ahead zero, which means that my gems branch is now the same as the main branch. And that's just some of the basics of source control. Like I said before, if you wanna know more about it, you can do some research. I highly recommend Stephen Ulibarri's Udemy course you can also ask questions in the comments or find me on Reddit and ask questions there. I hope you learned something from this video and thank you for watching.